Hi, I'm Dr. Leslie Johnson of Emory University, and in this lecture, we'll be differentiating between evidence-based interventions and implementation strategies. By the end of this talk, you will be able to define and discuss the relationship between evidence-based interventions and implementation strategies within implementation research. Our evidence-based interventions can take many forms. You're probably most familiar with these taking the form of policies, programs, procedures, practices, or even pills. Say, for example, the prescription of statins to re reduce the risk of death in post-stroke patients, or perhaps the diabetes prevention program. They may also be principles or products, like mHealth apps to increase physical activity or the principle of doing prevention before treatment. Evidence-based interventions can take on forms such as any of these seven presented here, and have already been tested to show that they work through effectiveness research. Once we know these things work, the goal of implementation research is to study how to help people or organizations do these things. So take a moment and think about your own area of work. What is the evidence-based intervention that you're interested in getting adopted and implemented? Now that you have in mind the thing that you're interested in implementing to address an unmet need, you can consider how best to support people in doing it, what we refer to as implementation strategies. Implementation strategies are formally defined by Proctor and colleagues as methods or techniques used to enhance the adoption, implementation, and sustainment of, of evidence-based practices or programs. In module 5A, we'll go into greater detail about implementation strategies. For now, Let's go over an example of implementation strategies from my own work as a co-investigator on the NIH-funded study Integrating HIV and Heart Health in South Africa, or iHeart South Africa. This study aimed to enhance hypertension screening, treatment, and management among people with HIV in South Africa. Our evidence-based intervention of interest was guideline-recommended blood pressure assessment and management. So what were the implementation strategies we used to support this? For these efforts in primary care clinics in Johannesburg, we prepared care coordinators, champions to support routine blood pressure checks in the clinics, conducted training of healthcare workers on hypertension care guidelines, provided audit and feedback data to combat clinical inertia around these tasks, and changed the record system and the physical equipment available to record relevant data and enable assessment of blood pressure by ensuring machines are available and maintained within the clinic spaces. As we saw in this last example, the evidence-based intervention and the implementation strategies are distinct, and yet both are necessary to successfully achieve implementation outcomes. In order to improve population health, it's not enough to have certain public health programs or healthcare practices that are effective. We need to think about the people responsible for implementing those programs and practices, the physical and social environment that they operate within, their attitudes and beliefs towards those evidence-based practices, and how these and other factors may hinder or enhance implementation success. What is necessary to support the process? You need to provide education and training, facilitate activities with feedback using real-time data, or even prepare champions within an organization to drive implementation and overcome resistance. These are all examples of implementation strategies, and they are the how we get our evidence-based interventions or the what implemented. Let's pause and think, what types of implementation strategies might work within your context to achieve adoption, implementation, and sustainment of your selected evidence-based intervention? Once you have determined that there's a gap in implementing an evidence-based intervention within your setting and or population of interest, you can identify, tailor, and test implementation strategies to address these barriers to implementation. We'll cover this more in module 5a. While we have defined evidence-based interventions and implementation strategies within the context of implementation science, 
the example demonstrated how implementation strategies function to support the implementation of evidence-based interventions. It's always best to ensure you have defined and clearly differentiated the what and the how of your implementation research project from the start. In conclusion, let's remember that the availability of evidence-based interventions alone are not sufficient for creating public health impact. We need to ensure that they are all put into practice.